Hi, this is Erika Kasab from a Small Robot Studio. In this video, I'll show you how to sculpt stylized fur in Nomad Sculpt. I will show you two techniques. The first one works best with a pressure sensitive stylus, like an Apple Pencil. But if you don't have one, don't worry, because I have an alternative technique. Let's set up our scene to start sculpting the fur. First, you gotta make sure that your model has enough polygons to sculpt detail. What I have right now is not good enough. I generally like subdividing a mesh, which allows me to change between different levels of resolution. You can do this inside the topology menu, on the multi-resolution section, and by tapping on subdivide. Get as many levels as you need, and use this slider to move between the different levels of detail. For now, I'll stay on the highest. Next, I'm gonna go to the layers menu and I'm gonna add two layers. I'm gonna name one of them paint and the other one fur. This is so I can protect the base volume of the sculpt. If I am unhappy with the fur, I can easily modify it or even get rid of it without destroying the base. I also recommend activating the stats. You can do this on the display settings menu and tapping on this icon which says stats. You must make sure that when you are sculpting, you can see a green dot and the layer's name. If the dot looks red, or there is no dot or layer information at all, it means that you are not sculpting on a layer. So the changes that you are making are permanent and these tools are not gonna behave the way that I show you. If this is confusing because you're not familiar with layer tools, I recommend having a look at the video that I created where I exclusively explain how these tools work. To get started, I'm gonna pick the paint layer and I'm gonna pick the paint brush. Looking at a lot of reference, I'm gonna go on top on my model and paint lines where the hair is gonna originate. It's very important to know the origin and the direction that the fur will follow. This stage might not be very exciting, but these guidelines can make the difference between fur that looks good and random texture that makes no sense. Once you are happy with it, you can go back to the layers menu and use this slider to lower the intensity. I like to have it very visible, so I can still see my guidelines, but I can appreciate well the shapes that I'm sculpting. Now I'm gonna create a special brush this is the technique that is designed to work best with a stylus. Find the layer brush, tap twice on it, and choose Clone. Pick a name that you will recognize. The new brush is gonna be all the way down to the bottom. You can tap, hold, and drag to put it in a different position. Now I'm gonna open the Stroke menu at the very top. I am gonna activate the very first option, World Space Radius. This is so the brush is always the same size, regardless of how I have zoom in or zoom out. Next, I'm gonna scroll to the area that says fall off. I'm gonna tap on that curve and I'm gonna choose this round one. Tap again in the curve and it's gonna close that menu. Scroll down a little bit more into the stroke section. A stroke spacing of around 13 works. I'm going to bring the Lazy Rope Stabilizer to around 16%, not very different to what it is by default. The next value, Stroke Smoothing, I'm going to set it to 2. It doesn't have to be exact. Now I'm going to go to the Pressure menu. I'm going to turn off Use Global Settings. On both Radius and Intensity, I'm going to activate Custom. On this curve, you can tap anywhere and it's going to add a point which you can modify to change this curve. If you tap again on a point, it will remove them. This is the settings that I like to use for most of my brushes. You can try to get the shape as close as possible, though you might have to modify it to suit your hand. This really depends on the pressure that you naturally apply to the pen. Now I'm gonna go back to the stroke menu and this time I'm gonna focus on alpha. This image that you see here is applied to the shape of my brush. This triangle shape is key for getting the shape of the hair. 
However, you will not find this alpha within the defaults. So you'll have to create it, which is pretty easy. I'll show you how to do it on Procreate. Here on Procreate, tap on the plus button and then on new custom canvas. I'm going to create a square canvas of 2048, meaning that this alpha is going to be of 2K resolution. We can set the DPI to 72 and this is all we need so we can create it. Here on the top right, I have my color palette, which I'm going to set to black. Tap and drag the circle into the canvas to paint it completely into black. I'm going to add one more layer. On the wrench icon, tap on canvas and choose drawing guide. Then choose edit drawing guide and in the bottom choose symmetry. Then tap on done. I'm going to select for color white. I'm going to go into the brush menu into the inking section and pick something very simple like fine tip. Within the layers, make sure that assisted is showing here. So whatever we draw is symmetrical. If it's not, simply tap on the thumbnail and choose drawing assist. Now I am going to draw a line creating a triangle. If you hold that, it's going to let you modify this. I'm going to let go and here at the very top, I'm going to choose edit shape. So I can modify this even further. I'm going to make sure that the tip of the triangle is touching. Notice that there is a gap here. I'm not putting this all the way up. This is going to be important in Nomad. And I'm going to drag this shape outside of the canvas here at the bottom. So we have our lovely, perfectly symmetrical triangle. Tap anywhere else to get out of this edit mode. I'm just going to zoom in. I'm going to make sure that this center is filled up. So I'm going to grab again this color from the corner and drag it to fill my triangle. Notice that when I zoom in, there is a gap between the original line and the filling. So I'm going to undo. And when I drag this color into here, I'm not going to let go. It's going to give me this color threshold at the top so I can drag this. So this color is going to bleed and I can avoid that weird gap. If you take it all the way to a hundred, it's going to bleed out of the shape. So be careful for that. You can of course fix this by hand. It just saves a lot of time to do it like this. Now we're going to go into the adjustments menu and select Gaussian blur. With my finger, I'm going to slide to the right so I can blur this triangle just slightly. Around 8% should be good enough. Tap again on that icon and you'll be out of that. Now I'm going to create one more layer. Tap on the thumbnail. Select again Drawing Assist. I'm going to use the very same brush but now in black. I'm going to make this slightly bigger. And I'm going to draw a circular shape. Doesn't have to be perfect. Just a circular base there. I'm just going to refine the silhouette. And again with my brush, I'm going to fill this up from the bottom. Once again, I'm going to go into the adjustments menu, gush and blur, and use a slider to get a nice soft transition. This should be good enough. I'm going to go back into the wrench icon, into share select JPEG and save it into my device. Now I can go back to Nomad into the alpha menu. I'm going to tap on the plus icon and select the file where you saved it. Now we are ready to start sculpting. I'm going to start with the bottom layer of the fur. In this case, it would be the farthest one, like this one on the cheek, or in the case of here, the head, this would be at the very bottom with this row on top and then this row overlapping again on the top. I'm going to work with a low intensity and make sure that you are on the right layer. I am not. So I'll switch to one that says fur and I'll start where the hair originates to the end. Origin to the end. Now this looks kind of repetitive because it's all the same size. So I'm going to go back to it and I'm going to work with three sizes mainly. 
So I have in the center a big clump, then a small clump, and on the sides a medium clump. And this looks a lot better than what I did at the start. Now to blend this base, I'm gonna use the Delete Layer Brush with kinda low intensity and a size relatively big in comparison to the thing that you just sculpted. I'm gonna move my brush again from origin to the end. This is so I can blend the base. What this brush is doing is getting rid of the layer information. See where I stop my stroke, right here in the middle. If I take it all the way to the end, then I'm gonna delete the whole strand. Once we have blended this in, I'm gonna go back to my fair brush and I can create the next row. And again with the delete layer brush, I'm gonna help this base blend in nicely. Once you get more fur in your sculpt, you're gonna need masking. Otherwise, when you try to blend, you're gonna destroy other detail that you created. So I'm gonna select the masking brush with this shortcut. I'm gonna paint around these clumps that I just created. Here at the top in the masking menu, I'm gonna choose invert. Now everything that is black is protected and I can focus on blending only this little section. Once you're happy with this, you can go back to the mask with this shortcut again to the top and select clear mask. Now, if we wanna create loose hair instead of the clumps, I'm gonna choose the crease tool. I'm gonna go to this top settings menu and I'm gonna reduce the pinch force. I like it somewhere around 0.1 or 0.2. Now, in the next menu, the stroke menu, I'm going to scroll down to the fall off. I'm going to tap on custom and I'm going to tap on this point and bring them closer to the center to create a sharp tip. I'm also going to go into the pressure menu and like I did before, choose custom. This should take those curves that I created before. Otherwise, you can add them by hand. I can close this now. By default, this tool is going to carve down, which we can use to break up these clumps. I'm going to start at the end and bring it up, making sure that it's fading. Let me try it once again here at the bottom. Start at the end, bring up and fade. To get the fading a bit nicer, I can bring my smooth tool and move in the opposite direction in which I created this. The fading is important so it looks natural. If I start at the end and go strong all the way to the origin, it doesn't really look good. It looks more like just a ditch, a canal, and it doesn't really communicate here. Now I can also tap on sub, and instead of carving, this is gonna pull geometry up, which I can use to create some loose hairs, maybe around there, here, one extra tip if you're working with these techniques is to have different layers for each part of the body. You will appreciate that I separated the face, the legs, uh, the body and the tail. This is so when I'm fading, especially when I'm using the delete layer tool, I'm not accidentally deleting all the strands that I have already created. Anyway, before I move on to the next technique, I want to take a moment to thank the group of amazing people who support this channel via Patreon. You guys are seriously the best. All our supporters get access to a growing library of 3D assets, including a pose version of this cat to practice fur sculpting or painting textures. Learn more about it at patreon.com slash smallrobotstudio. Alright, let's carry on with a technique that does not require the stylus. So, once again, I'm gonna tap twice on the layer brush and I'm gonna clone it to create a duplicate. Once again, I'm gonna open the stroke menu. I'm gonna go down where it says stroke type and I'm gonna choose grab dynamic radius. Up here in the alpha section, just like before, I'm gonna choose a nice, a nice triangular shape. I'm gonna turn off this body layer and create a new one to show you how this one works. For this type of brush, you don't need to draw anything. All you need to do is tap and drag. 
you can rotate this so the hair is facing the right direction. The size will depend on how far you drag. If you only drag it a little bit, then it's small, but if you keep dragging it, it keeps getting bigger and bigger. The intensity you will be able to change with the sliders on the side. So like we did before, I'm gonna start from the lower rows. I can use some smoothing so this won't blend nicely. On these areas where they're bumping up, I can use a flatten tool to get an even surface, as even as possible. And to do the final blend, the same as before, I'm gonna use a delete layer brush, make it somewhat big in relationship to the stroke that I created, and start from the origin and drag towards the middle of the hair. You have to do it a few times so it blends seamlessly. And now we can layer on top. If you're doing a center clump, I would recommend deactivating symmetry because you can see that it's doubling the intensity or sometimes it overlaps weirdly. This looks nicer. To help these two areas blend nicely, again, I'm gonna use the flatten tool, but this time I'm gonna set it to feel. Like its name says, it's gonna fill those gaps in between. And it shouldn't really add any extra volume to the strands that I have. One of the cool things about this approach is that you can change up your alphas. For instance, this one with the black lines in between, which is gonna simulate smaller hair. Generally, I would also recommend not using a perfect triangle because it can look a bit too geometric. My only recommendation when creating alphas is to blur that edge at least a little bit, otherwise it's gonna look too sharp in Nomad, and make sure that you add a base that transitions from black all the way to white. It's nice to have a little collection because you can change between them and create a lot of variety. These techniques might be a bit weird at the start, but once you repeat the process enough, it's pretty easy to do. It might seem like it didn't take me long to get my cat's fur, but I actually had to do it over and over and over again because I was not happy with how it looked. With such a stylized design, I had to be subtle and economical with the fur. Adding lots of clumps was easy, but it just made it look noisy and just plain dumb. All of this is to say, sculpting the shapes is not that difficult. The real challenge is designing the fur. Take time to experiment and understand your style. My main reference was this sculpt by Mikhail Levier. I love how the fur is visible at the origin and then it fades. After many attempts, I realized that I did not need more fur. I needed less. I needed areas of rest. For instance, here it's detailed, but all around here there's rest. Detail, rest. Detail, big area for rest before going once again to the detail. This creates a nice balance, especially around the face, because I had to make sure the fur didn't distract you from the eyes and the expression. Anyway, that's enough rambling. As always, I look forward to seeing your creation. Feel free to tag me on social media and happy sculpting! That's it for this tutorial. If you find it useful, make sure that you leave a like so other people can find it. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe as we are bringing out CG and illustration tutorials every week. Become a patron and access tutorial assets, bonus content, a private discord and more by clicking in the link below.